Intel's Lunar Lake versus Apple's M3 chip. This comparison has been four years in the making. Yes, ever since Apple ditched Intel for their own Apple Silicon chips, Intel's been working on this Lunar Lake brand new redesign. And based on all the reviews, as well as our review that we just did, this is absolutely killer. So in this video, I'm gonna compare the Asus ZenBook S14 with the Lunar Lake 258V chip compared to Apple's 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M3 chip. Yes, this thing costs $1,600 brand new, while this actually costs 1,500. And it has a one terabyte SSD, double than what you get in the MacBook, and 32 gigs of RAM four times more RAM than what you get in the base MacBook Pro for $100 less. Of course, you can find deals on this MacBook Pro on Amazon, like right now it's $300 off, link down in the description. But in this video, this is gonna be very interesting to see which one is better comparing everything, especially performance. But the biggest thing I'm excited to test is actually the battery life since Lunar Lake is known to be really, really good so far in all of the reviews. So right now I have both of these charged up to 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug these chargers. Both of these are set to the highest performance and I also max out the display brightness, which actually gives an advantage to the Lunar Lake laptop since it has a 500 nit display compared to 600 nits standard brightness on the MacBook Pro. But before I get into the displays and the performance and everything, I wanna compare the exteriors. First of all, you can see we have the classic silver right here on the MacBook Pro and I love Asus's ZenBook, the new aluminum finish with this really cool design. This, by the way, is super fingerprint resistant. It's an absolutely amazing finish. We have it right there on the top cover. Both of these are still really nice. And even though these are both 14 inch laptops, you can see that the ZenBook is a little bit less tall going this way. You can see that as far as width, they're about the same. As far as thickness, the ZenBook is actually thinner, which is kind of mind blowing, both on the bigger side and the thinner side compared to the flat MacBook Pro. That's actually really crazy. In terms of the ports, I actually have to give this one to the MacBook Pro because it has MagSafe 3, so it's a separate connector for charging, which is actually very convenient, and two Thunderbolt ports just like the Asus ZenBook has. You have the headphone jack right there, while you have an HDMI on the left side on the ZenBook, and switching over to the other side, the MacBook has the HDMI on this side, but it also has an SD card slot, while the ZenBook chooses to give you an old USB-A port, which is definitely useful for compatibility, but I think the MacBook wins out with the additional SD card. Now one thing that impresses me about the ZenBook is that just like Apple's really good hinges that open up with one hand, one finger, just like that, they've also greatly improved it and made it one hand just like that, but they've added Windows Hello, which logs you in automatically. I wish Apple would add that to the MacBook Pro. For now, we just only have that Touch ID power button. Now before I jump into the displays, I wanna talk about the keyboards and the trackpads. I really love Apple's MacBook Pro's Magic Keyboard keyboard feels really nice and clicky. Now it does feel okay, but I'm not getting that really satisfying tactile click on the ZenBooks keyboard. It's still a really, really great keyboard. The backlighting also works very well. I have it set manually to be nice and bright on here. The MacBook also has backlighting, which turns on automatically when it gets dark. But for now, I'm just gonna turn off the backlighting on the ZenBook. But first, I wanna show you a dash cam that has the best 4K and HDR capabilities at an affordable price from our sponsor, 70My. This dash cam comes with innovative safety features with next-gen driving assistance with Sony's StarVis 2 technology and 4K resolution that looks amazing. The A810 comes with dual cameras, front and rear that record continuously when the car is on. And with the adapter kit, it'll record time-lapse and with 4G connectivity, the dash cam experience gets better with app alerts, so you know your car is safe when you're not around or someone else is driving your car. And the best feature is the 70My Night Owl Vision that achieves great clarity in darker environments with exposure balance and light glare control so that you can still read signs and license plates when you need it. And you can pick up this dash cam with discounts of up to 35% on Prime Day or Black Friday, and I'll have the links in the description 
description and pinned comment below. Now, as far as the trackpads, Apple has the best trackpad ever because it's a force touch trackpad. It doesn't actually click. It uses magnets and pressure sensitivity, which means you have really nice gesture support, double clicking and other stuff. It's the best, but I really don't like this ZenBook trackpad because it uses the old diving board design where it's really tough to click it at the very top and super easy at the bottom. I really don't like these trackpads. And now it's time to test the speaker quality with our classic Where We Started song to see which one has the better speakers. Alright guys, that was not even a competition. The MacBook Pro smoked the ZenBook in terms of everything. The bass, the vocals, very clear and natural. The high range of frequencies just dominated. Now while I have this open, I actually want to jump into the display quality comparison because I'm noticing something very, very big. Even though this has an OLED display with 500 nits of brightness, I'm actually seeing this one look better with deeper blacks because I'm looking at the ZenBooks display, I'm seeing gray all over it. And why is that? Well, because it's a touch screen. You can see that right here, which is a really cool advantage, but usually touch screen layers mess with the deep blacks to the point where this mini LED MacBook Pro looks even better. It doesn't have a touch screen, but the display quality here looks really nice with 600 nits of brightness. Yes, this is not an HDR video and it actually definitely looks brighter. And part of the reason why the MacBook looks like it has deeper blacks is because the display on the ZenBook is more reflective. I'm looking at my reflection in the screen and it is so much brighter on the ZenBook right now. It's a crazy, crazy difference. However, one of the downsides with the mini LED local dimming zones kind of bleeds out around very bright text. Like in this scenario right here, you can see all of this glow on the MacBook Pro display while the ZenBook doesn't have it because it's true OLED. In terms of the actual quality, the MacBook Pro has a slightly sharper display, 3K resolution compared to basically 2.9K. It's a very small difference and both of them have 120 Hertz capable displays. And with that said, let's jump in into the performance testing. But first, I do wanna do a quick battery checkup to see the battery life. And oh wow, the ZenBook's at 100%. Well, yep, the MacBook Pro's also at 100%. This usually never happens. Like the old Intels, they would already be at like 90, 95% after we did all of the different physical changes and difference testing before we get into performance but it's keeping up, this is super impressive. And now let's jump into Geekbench 6 to test out the CPU performance. We can see we have the new Lunar Lake Ultra 7 258V with 32 gigs of RAM. Yes, that is crazy because we have only eight on the M3. We have 4.05 gigahertz for the clock speed. Let's run the CPU test. And here we go, we have the scores and surprisingly, Lunar Lake is actually not that far behind. The M3 chip is about 17% faster in terms of single core and only 10% faster in terms of multi-core. I'm actually really surprised because this is only an eight core chip, four P cores and four E cores, which matches the M3, but usually Windows laptops like to add a lot more cores to compete. This is really impressive. In terms of actual web browsing performance, I have Speedometer 3.0 opened up on both of these. Let's run them, 39.8 on the MacBook compared to 27. The M3 is now beating it by a huge margin. Now to test out web-based app performance more accurately, we have this project in Figma, which was sent to us from 500 Designs, one of the best studios based out of LA. The first test is to basically zoom in on something and see how fast the content loads. Oh, there you go, it just loaded on. Okay, let me test out a different spot just in case. I mean, dang, that's already loaded. Like. Yeah, this thing's super snappy as well. But the main test is to actually export 12 of these different layers to see which one finishes first. And by the way, I'm actually hearing the fans spinning up on the Lunar Lake laptop, whereas 
I've heard nothing at all from the MacBook Pro so far. All right, and the Lunar Lake laptop just finished a minute and 58 seconds. Let's go ahead and test it on the MacBook Pro. And the MacBook Pro just finished a minute and 37 seconds compared to a minute 58 on the Lunar Lake ZenBook S14. So it's still about 21 seconds faster in this test, even with only eight gigs of RAM. Now with that said, I do wanna do some graphics tests. Let's do Geekbench 6 with uh, OpenCL on this laptop and Metal on the M3. And holy smokes, guys, the M3 is scoring over twice as high, 47,800 compared to 23,000 in OpenCL on Lunar Lake. And I also ran it with Vulkan and it's still like 80% faster, 27,000. 500. Now this of course is Geekbench 6's graphics test. Let's go do something else that's a little bit more fair and is a more realistic benchmark. And that is of course 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme. So let's go ahead and run it. And there you go. It looks like the M3 is 58% faster, 49.6 FPS compared to 31.36. Now since Wildlife Extreme is more of a mobile gaming test, I do want to test the new Steel Nomad Lite, which is basically for modern triple a game so let's run that and there you go we have our results and it looks like the m3 chip is still 26 percent faster than the lunar lake in terms of graphics performance and now let's move on to some throttling and thermal testing this is going to be cinebench 2024 let's do a 10 minute stress test right away the macbook pro has finished we have a score of 678 and we still are running the test on the lunar lake laptop it's got a little bit more to go and there you go the test is finished we have 13.5% faster on the M3 chip compared to Lunar Lake. I'm actually surprised it's not that big of a difference. And then finally, we also have DaVinci Resolve. We have a five minute 4K export. And here, the M3 finished in a minute and 35 seconds compared to two minutes on the Lunar Lake ZenBook S14. So it looks like the MacBook has been faster in basically every single test so far, but do keep in mind that it is more expensive while only having 512 gigs of SSD storage and only eight gigs of RAM. Well, this guy right here is $100 cheaper with one terabyte of SSD and 32 gigs of RAM. And just to show you that difference, you can't even get 32 gigs of RAM on the M3 MacBook Pro you can do 24 with one terabyte. That's $2,200 if you want to almost match the specs that you get with the ZenBook for $1,500. That's $700 more retail price. So I've got to say, all in all, I've been super, super impressed with the Asus ZenBook S14 with the value that it gives it, especially with the OLED display, everything else. This has been great. But the last thing we gotta compare and test is the final battery life results. So let's go ahead and check out the ZenBook. We have 68%. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive. And then moment of truth for the MacBook Pro, we have 68%, exactly the same battery life. I cannot believe this guy's Lunar Lake. Intel, you guys did it. Congratulations. Four years later, after Apple Silicon, you guys have been getting beat down with your x86 chips, but you've proven that it doesn't even matter. x86 versus ARM. This is an x86 chip and the battery life is absolutely insane. Matching the M3 14 inch MacBook Pro, even though we actually ran some of the tests longer on this machine because it took longer, it was slower, like for example, that final stress test in Cinebench, we still have the same battery life. Holy smokes. Intel, good job. You guys have redeemed yourselves. And I can't even believe it in terms of value. More RAM, more storage for less cash. What is this? What's going on 2024? I can't believe it. Bravo Intel, you guys are absolutely killing it. And to think that you guys did this with an eight core CPU with only four performance cores, unlike everybody else that's giving you a lot of performance cores, this is really impressive. I can't wait to see what you got going on in the next couple of years with your updated version of this chip. Man, 
the laptop market is getting really competitive. And based on everything that I tested in this video, the ZenBook is definitely the winner in terms of value. If you care about value, you should actually buy this laptop, especially since you get the uh, x86 Windows gaming support, which is really, really cool. But of course, the MacBook is faster in this test, and there's also the M3 Pro and M3 Max, but that's a whole nother story. Basically, good job, Intel. If you have any thoughts about this comparison, let me know down in the comments section below. Definitely subscribe for more videos like this above and check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.